Hi, everybody. Welcome to Kermit and Friends. I am Elisa. This is Fozzy. And Kermit's watching us from heaven. I want to welcome you all to the show. I know right now um, the waiting room is full to get on Kermit and Friends. Last week, I prayed that people would want to be on the show and want to be a part of it. Okay. This just shows that prayer works. It works. I prayed for people to want to be on this show, great people to want to be on this show. I knew what keeps this show going is people. And I want to start off this week's Kermit and Friends with a prayer, okay? So dear Lord, please give me the strength and the courage to host Kermit and Friends Sunday service with dignity, integrity, faith, and courage. I pray that I can lead this group of individuals from different walks of life, different parts of the country, and in some cases, different parts of the world. Please forgive me if I sin during this podcast. I'm working on my patience, my anger issues, and certain triggers that bring me back to darker times, Lord. I am flawed, okay? I'm flawed too, but I've repented, and I'm working on becoming a better person for you and for myself. We ask you, Lord, to walk us everywhere that we go. Help us to keep your word in our hearts and that we may not sin against you. Almighty God, thank you for our good health and enabling us to come to this place to glorify your name. Through Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so that's my prayer. We have a huge guest for today, an unbelievable guest, a successful entrepreneur, Every single thing he's done in his life, he's been number one. He invented the OVN dog vitamin. He went to school as a licensed clinical hypotherapist, hypnotherapist, hypnotherapist, sorry. He wants to help people to make money. No, not to make money. He doesn't want to make money from this. He just wants to help people. If that's not noble, I don't know what is. Before we get to him, I want to see, this is a person I've asked to be on the show, but he said no. What the heck is going on there? Huh. I thought I saw Benji, but it wasn't him. Okay. So now, uh, before we get to Alan, who is our special guest, our first guest, I want to say hi to my sister who has a, a message for us. A commercial. Uh, we have a sponsor, and my sister Allison is here to bring it to us. Allison, uh, what are we looking at here? Hi, everybody. Um, today I wanted to share with you something that has done a lot for my life and has improved my wellness, which mm -hmm. I know everybody around holidays is looking to do and accomplish with all the damage that we do to our bodies between alcohol and unhealthy foods. Um, it's called Arbon. It's actually helped me lose 45 pounds after having my third baby. And wow. it, yeah, I start every morning with it and it gives me energy. It keeps me full. And the best part is it actually has all the nutrition I need today. So real quick, I'm going to do a demonstration so you can see how easy it is. I'm super busy. Okay. Um, my, my mornings go by very quickly. So I like to use a Ninja blender for this. That's just what I use, but you could really use any blender. Um, I, some people like berries in the morning. I don't like a lot of sugar. So I put some ice in there. What blender I I, is it? The, the Ninja Professional. So I use just the one serving cup because it's just for me. Um, mm -hmm. I get my protein powder. I like chocolate, but they actually sell vanilla, chocolate, and coffee. Which mm -hmm. I am. Mm, yeah, that sounds try, good, right, Kevin? Yeah. Th Chocolate. My... Actually, actually, what you should do, if you're getting a sponsorship like that, tell them that you want to yeah. try everything. Because <laughs> let's say if you don't like one of the flavors, you have yeah. two like different flavors as a backup. Right, exactly. No, that's so true. So I'm a chocolate, I like chocolate. I'm a chocolate addict. I have a sweet tooth every day. And this helps me kind of meet that need. So I do two scoops of the chocolate. The little ice. Arbon oh. also does a, does a green mix, which is all of your vitamins for um, vegetables and fruits for the whole day. It's like 30 servings. So if I don't eat fruits or vegetables for the rest of today, I know that I'm going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. And then I get, I do a half a banana. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a lot of carbs in bananas. 
So yeah. I do just a half. I just do a half. I put it into my shake. Hmm. The, the green scoop mix. Sometimes I add a scoop of flaxseed. Um, hmm. Also super nutritious. And then I do. You could do any kind of milk that you want. Um, I am on a no non dairy fix, so I'm doing almond milk or cashew milk. But you could do regular milk, right? Absolutely. For my oh, kids, Allison, hold on so one second. One second, sure. Al. I'm getting a call. Kermit and friends, this is Elisa speaking. Hi, Elisa. It's Barry, boss. How are you? Hey, Barry. Thanks for calling in. Barry, my sister is doing a presentation right now for Arbon products. She's making a shake with chocolate and it's very healthy. There's protein in it. Are you a healthy guy, Barry? Yeah, I am. I actually lost a lot of weight while I've been in here in, inside a uh, loony bin. So my sister's I, lost 43 uh, pounds, Barry. Have you lost more than 43 that? 43 pounds, congratulations. How much has who lost? My sister, my sister Allison, who's on camera right now. Okay. She lost 43 pounds with the Arbonne uh, shake and protein drink. So I think that everybody yeah. should try that and everybody should reach out. Well, my yeah, sister probably right. doesn't want to, you know, be reached out to, I would guess. Um, Allison, do you want to be reached out to or you just want to be left alone? No, contact Elisa if you, you know, want to try the product. What, what, or if I there's mean, like the website, well, is there like a website that we can do? <laughs> yeah, maybe there's a no, website. What, what'd you say, Barry? What? You, let me see if Benji's interested. I just left alone regarding MLMs. I don't want to sell any product or anything. I just, I, I don't do that. Okay, know? Barry. Let's see what Benji has to say. Benji's on the air right now. Benji, are you interested in losing weight through Arbon? Benji? All right, so Benji's very quiet right now, but I think he would be interested in that. It seems like something he would be interested in. So, um, so Alex... Yeah, well, I'd, I'd, I'd be interested in trying them, like one or two, if she were to send it to me. Okay, yeah, I can send it to you. Um, do, does the mental asylum accept packages? I'm not allowed to receive it here. Hold on, let me close this door because somebody just opened it and they pumped up the music, okay? Okay, but, uh, I almost it's called you Benji. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Okay, um, so, uh, Barry, I just want to... Please close the door on the meeting. I'm on a meeting interview. Can you close the door, please? Yeah, please. I'm on a meeting interview. Hello? Hey, hey, Barry. Um, so, Barry, I want to get to my first guest, Alan. Um, so, Barry, do you have anything to say about um, the guests that you have booked for the show? Because you've helped us produce this show. Who's coming up in the next couple weeks? Uh, you mean to produce your show? Yeah. Oh, well, it's not the next few weeks, I don't think. I, I can't say anything yet, but we have some big-time guests planned for Elisa um, uh, that I'm working on. Um, it's not going to be the next few weeks, but, I, but it'll be sometime soon. Um, one of them is the co-founder of MTV and founder of Country Music Television. He also founded Pay-Per-View Sports Entertainment, a movie channel, and was the first general manager of Nickelodeon, bringing Nick and Knight to the network. And he's now founding a new streaming platform called Technotainment.com okay. that's going to overtake the entire streaming industry. And then um, I possibly, possibly, but not guaranteed, may have Tony Bon Jovi for you, who, um, who put together Bon Jovi as John Bon Jovi's second cousin, and, um, and produced the first few records, so Bon Jovi, 70, 78 Degrees Fahrenheit, and Slippery When Wet, and he also put together the band, and got John a record deal, so. All right, great. Have him for you so if, if anybody knows any uh, second know or third yet. cousins of any celebrities, they're more than welcome here. I'm about to bring Alan on. Yeah, Barry, you're a big fan of Alan. I know you love Alan. So yeah. do you have any questions yeah. for Alan? Because I'm about to bring him on. Like I said, he has been successful at everything he's ever done. He's amazing. He's very Christian. He's very religious. Um, yeah. He has a great personality. He has one of the top personalities of you know anyone I've ever met. Yeah, so I have a question for you. 
question for Alan. Okay. Um, you know, Elisa was going to ask you if I could get your phone number so we could talk about what we spoke about the other day privately on the phone regarding my show and regarding the industry, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, that we talked about, I don't want to say what, on, on this show, but um, my sex tape I found out today actually has over 200 million views, 204 million views it has on Pornhub and some channels, not even my yeah, but what, What's your question for Alan, Barry? 204 million views I found out today. All right. Okay. Okay, Barry. I'm gonna ask Alan if uh, he, if you could have his number. I very highly doubt it. Call me back, Barry. I gotta go. Barry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I say a few more things? Sure. That we plan to talk about. Okay. Because this stuff that we talked about was not what we agreed to initially. Okay. I wanted to say that I feel Howard Stern will not have me on his show due to the fact he feels that I'm going to steal his entire fan base. And I know Bendy's listening, and, um, you know, whenever a rival comes up to somebody like Howard, of course, he's not going to have them on the show. Huh. Now, I'm putting it out there that I'm offering to Howard to put me on his show because if he wants to, but I will tell you that um, three, four years ago, I spoke with a beauty queen who was on Doc Ivan's Facebook profile in university. Benji knows who I'm talking about. And she was third place runner up, Miss Montana, USA. I explained to her I was interested in her. Barry, you're confusing me right now. You're confusing me. Barry, you're confusing me. I have to be hypnotized right now. I'm going to call you back or you call me back, okay? <sighs> Well, can I just finish this real quick? All right, very quickly, okay? very I quickly. Need I need to say this now. It's very important, okay? So Howard told her that I would use her, abuse her, and dump her like all the rest. He was being a white fucking knight, okay? And I don't know Alan, can you believe this? <laughs> okay, I treat women with respect. On, you know, the city yeah, there you go. Right, okay, okay. Barry, I got to go. I got to get to my guest. Call me back. I feel bad hanging up on him, Alan, but I just, you know, it's, 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 it's the calls are day and night. <laughs> it's okay. Hello, everybody. I hope you all can hear me out there. Oh, we can um, hear you beautifully. Good, 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 good. I'm going to um, attempt to do something that I've never done with this many people out there. And I don't know how many are out there, but uh, I know it can be done. And let me tell you, um, I've done so many things in my life. I'm 60 years old and I've done many, many things, both good and both bad. And it seems like as the older we get, we begin to notice more of the bad things that we've done. So, you know, I have something to tell all of you. And, you know, this day, is going to be the most amazing day of your life and lots of blessings from all of this comes from the universe and it will always remember everything and i want you to always remember everything will be okay and you know if it's not then in the end you know everything will turn out to be fine for you. So what I want you all to do, I'm going to put some music on and I just want you to, first of all, close your eyes very softly, very gently. And we're going to talk about faith. And what this practice will do is it's going to fortify your own spiritual convictions, and you'll find that many seemingly unbearable barriers in your life will crumble and dissolve in this meditation. And your devotion and love for God will co-mingle with the devotion and love of others. 
in divine and bliss will radiate from you, helping all persons that you meet. So I'm going to turn this music up, but I hope you all can hear it. Turn this up. And we'll now just let your eyes continue to stay closed. And in Hebrews 11.1, 1, there's a mighty, powerful scripture. And it reads, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, yet evidence of the things not seen. Let me say it again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, Yet evidence of the things not seen. And as you keep your eyes closed, I want you to surround yourself in your mind. Picture yourself in a room. This is a very private room to you. This is your room. And as you stand there or sit there or however you are, if you're laying in your bed, listening to this or to me, or if you're standing, just sit somewhere or lay somewhere and just relax and surround yourself in the light and the love from the universe whether it be Jesus, whether it be God, know that it's the entire universe shining down on you. And as that light begins to get brighter and brighter, you can feel the warmthness just flow through your body and into your spirit as the light and the love of the universe shines upon you. And with your eyes closed, picture yourself not only in this bright, beautiful light, light like you've never seen before, warmthness that you've never felt before. And I want you to look because right there in front of you, is this door and it's a big door with a big handle on it and behind that door is all the things that you wish for i want it all behind that door if you've been sick this is a way to get unsick if you've had money problems, put the money behind the door. If you've had any kind of problems, whatever is good that you wish for, put it behind that door. Because once we open up that door and we walk inside that door, light is going to shine upon you like you've never felt it before. That's why I said today, is going to be the most amazing day of your life. Now, as you walk up to that door, I want you in your mind to reach up and grab the handle of that door. And now each and every one of you, as you grab that handle, turn that handle ever so slightly, feel the coldness of the handle, become warmthness of the handle from the universe. And as you walk into that room, you are now showered with all those wishes. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, yet evidence of the things unseen. Now each and every one of you, at the count of three, I want you to slowly open your eyes, listen to the music, notice the sounds in the room. One, two, three, eyes open, wide awake, and 
welcome back. Wow. I oh promise you, every one of you out there, things will get better. When you're down and you feel like the world is at the bottom of your feet and you just don't know how to get back up, believe me, I've been there. I've taken the pills to try to end it. And you know what? There's always a better waiting for you at the end. It's good to see you all. That was so beautiful, Alan. Wow. You spread so much light and so much happiness to everyone right now. No, I don't. Everyone spreads it amongst each other. I am just a tool. I'm just, a, you know, we're only as good as the tools in front of you. That's what I tell everyone, even the people that I work with. I'm like, look, we're only as good as the tools in front of you. Unless we have everything in front of us, we're not that great. So once we learn to develop these and we learn to have all these tools, nobody is going to stop you. No bill is going to get in your way. Nothing is going to hurt you because faith is the answer. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of the things unseen. That word faith is now going to be instilled into your subconscious mind. And tonight, when you fall asleep, or today, when you do something, the word faith is going to start popping up more and more in your mind. Hmm. I believe that. I believe that it just takes one person to enlighten you. Sometimes it's just something that happens. Like everybody at Kerman and Friends here, they didn't know this was going to happen today. And now it did. So maybe the people that are here are meant to be here. Do you feel that, Alan? I'm 100%. I feel yeah. it. Like right now, but we you have, have to family. feel it too. You have to want it in order to have it. Well, I've prayed for this. Um, ham hands. Um, did you pray for, for this? Did you pray for enlightenment or, or faith? Do you have faith, Ham Hands? I do. Uh, by the way, how are you doing, Elisa? Doing great. Welcome to the show. This is Alan the Hypnotist. He's how helping you everybody. Um, you know, are you a man of faith, Ham Hands? Do you feel similar to Alan and I? Yeah, I mean, I believe. I mean, I have faith. I'm a, a very, a very uh, positive person. Yeah. And uh, I do believe if, if people think positive, positive things come to Radiate. your life. You know? uh -huh. Yeah, you know, that's so true. Yeah, the more positive you think and the more poetry you act, the more positive things come to your life. Because, you know, I mean, when you think positive, positive cells are created by your brain, uh -huh. they're released into your body, and it gives you. A, a positive uh, feeling, you know. Absolutely, and and hand hands um, or hand hands, you've been positive. You have a lot of um, challenges in life, right? Yeah. Do you want to tell the audience? Maybe they don't know you yet. Do you want to tell them about your challenges and how you've been able to overcome them? Well, you know, I am a, uh, I am a disabled person. I use a, a motorized wheelchair. Oh. For the accident, I lived in Puerto Rico. From there, I went to uh, college. From there, I went to the army. Uh -huh. After the army, came to New York. Had the accident. I went back to school. For years, I've been teaching. Uh, yeah, basic computer classes, basic internet, basic English, basic Spanish. Uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm a positive person. You know, the way I don't let negative stuff get in, get in the way of things I want to do. And, and if you live and think positive, you know, po positive things uh, uh, get you uh, where you want to go. Absolutely. Where does that come from, Alan? Because sometimes, you know, obviously this guy, Ham Hands, he's a beautiful guy, but he's in a, you know, a wheelchair. He seems to have so many challenges, yet he, he has so much to He's positive. Yeah, because he has positive. the faith. That's why he came in. He has the yeah. faith. He has the positive. He... Look, this man has been cut off at the legs and put into a wheelchair. I'm not saying that your legs are cut off, ham ham, but you're 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 in a chair, but yet you're still you're on here telling us to stay positive. Thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, we need people like that desperately right now. 
I know I was feeling really depressed and I just needed somebody like Ham Hands or someone like you to come into my life and inspire me because sometimes it just takes that one person uh, just to enlighten you so much. I was just in the dumps. I don't even know how I got out of it. I think it's through this actually. It's the power of suggestion. I mean, come on. We all have it. We all have it. I mean, I've been to the point where I was at the bottom of the barrel. I had nothing. I rented an Airbnb room, decided that was where I was going to take my life, and that was it. <laughs> and I couldn't even take my life after doing so many drugs. I couldn't even take my life from doing those drugs. But you know what? I knew it just if things happen. Long as you stay positive, like your friend just said, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you keep the faith, no matter what, you will move on and things will get better. So why do you think you got to a place where you were using drugs to take your own life? Well, it wasn't that I was using drugs. It's the drug that I wanted to use to take my life. I had just, it was, I was done. I was over with. And, you know, there's a lot of reasons people get to, like the gentleman just said, the mm -hmm. bottom of the sink. And the way you get to the bottom of the sink is by reputation. You just keep doing it over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And when you start feeling sorry, remember there's a saying, it says misery loves company. So when you have and you hold and you stay around that sort of thing, you become that sort of thing. Right. That's yeah. why so many people end up staying where they're at because they become complacent. They become happy with where they're at rather than knowing that there's further way to go up. Every single one of us on here can do it. We just have to have faith and and learn whatever it is that we're learning to make ourselves go up. I think there's actually a scripture about that. It's when you oh, yeah? when you lay with the pigs, you become one of them. Yeah, similar. Yeah, or, yeah. or a bad company corrupts good character. Barry, have you found that before? That what? That when you had bad company, when you were hanging out with a bunch of bad people, then it, it hurt your life? Yeah, it has. It has, yeah. I've been around a lot of bad people lately, so. Lately? So, well, ever since the Fed, I have ta I'm protected by the cartel now and all this stuff and, well, a former cartel, I should say. <laughs> okay, so that sounds like it's going better. So you, you told me to contact a porn star, Barry. I mean, is that good company? Is a porn star still good company? Is what? You told me to contact a bunch of porn stars by email. Is that good company? That I told you to contact a bunch of porn stars by email? Yeah. I never told you to contact a bunch of porn stars by email. Oh, okay. Then I, I won't do it then. That. <laughs> then I won't do it. All right, Barry, uh, what do you want to say? Do you want to announce any any guests that are coming on uh, in the next couple of weeks? Or, you know, what did you call to say? Well, I can't see their names. That's the problem. I want oh, to okay. be surprised. But, okay. But it's it's, 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 it's going to be like, it's, it's going to be after the new year. Okay. And so, after the new year. But, um, after the new year with, uh, with the co founder of MTV. So, what did Benji say about my comments regarding Stern? I haven't had a chance to talk to him uh, because I'm on the show right now. But so let me just get this straight. You think that Howard Stern's jealous of you? Why? Because I have a hit reality show, a bunch of sex tapes. I have like seven of them that, ho that have combined over, over probably 207 million views combined mm -hmm. but i know the first one i did with with brianna has 204 million views as of today on some other channel that's on pornhub it's not my channel but a tech in here told me that it has over 204 million views. yeah actually me and alan we watched your porn right alan uh we, yeah, we did watch i gotta call you back 
Uh, we did watch Barry's porn. Uh, what did you think? I mean, was it good? Uh, I, I couldn't look, really. I mean, you're asking me if I thought porn was good? Look, I, I owned a, a, one of the largest lube companies in the country called Friction, F-R-I-X-I-O-N. Mm -hmm. And I've been around all porn stars. I, I know Stevie Hirsch from Vivid, uh, Paul Fishbein from AVN. I know a lot of these people, Tara Patra back in the days. Mm -hmm. I can go on and on and on, Jenna Jameson. But you know what? What is porn? Porn is people doing things to their bodies with other people in front of other people. And that's porn. And if you like that, that's great. Yeah, Barry likes it. It's and that might be why Barry's behind uh, where he's at right now. Well, because I got something, family. Lisa. Lisa, I got something that um, just came delivered to me, and this to me is a sign. Yeah. So I want to share this with you guys. And if you don't have it, I'm going to give you the um, where you can get it. I'll send it to Lisa, and then she can send it out to y'all. Okay. But this is um, it's it's free, and it's interesting that it just came to me. And it's called the perfect fit. And it's in First Peter 5.10. And I'd like for you all just to listen to this. Elisa, are you ready for this? I am. I'm excited. Can you all hear it? Jesus' his father, well, his earthly father, was a carpenter, a builder, really working with wood and stone. A true craftsman, he had the instinct of knowing how to build, how to repair, how to fit broken pieces together to be strong and maybe stronger than they were before. As a good Jewish father, he would have started early teaching his son the family craft. Jesus would have learned early what it meant to build and to restore. So too, his heavenly father, the creator and restorer of wood, of stone and of hearts and of souls. Is there some part of you in need of repair? Have you been suffering for a while and feel the need for restoration. Well, this meditation will help you visit this carpenter, a walk through his shop, a space to encounter the divine presence of God as you face the divine tension of whether you can ever be restored. So to begin your meditation, find a place to be comfortable, alone, quiet, and still. We will be together for about 15 minutes. Let's start by taking a minute right now to settle into wherever you are. Just sit comfortably, quiet, your back straight, and begin to close your eyes or keep them open in a soft focus for now, it doesn't matter. But intentionally start to become aware of God, His Spirit and His Son present in and around you. Just take time now to be aware of their presence. So now, this opening time of prayer is yours. It's a gift to you. Approach God now and engage Him with your mind and your heart in a way that stirs up your thoughts and emotions. He is present here. He is beckoning you, waiting for you to return, waiting for you to bring Him what's broken, and just dwell in his presence. So take a minute now. Pause if you need more time. But appeal to him now in your way, using your words, 
and using your time, by faith, ask him to take your hand and guide you home, to show you the way, the path, and pray to him with your hand in his. Feel your hand in his right now. Feel like it's a perfect fit, because it is. Alan, you have a caller. Yeah. Can we just put on pause for a second? You just have this caller. Sure. I don't know who I don't know who it is. Uh, Kermit and Friends. Hello. Hi. Who's this? This is Ken from New York. Ken from New York. Alan, can you hear Ken? I can hear Ken. Okay, Ken, what's your question for Alan? Okay. Why does he think to be happy you need faith? I don't have faith and I'm really happy. You're really happy? Yeah, I get up, I a big smile on my face, and I seize the day, and I'm really happy. Hmm. No, that's a good, you know what? That's a good, that's that, that's a a good question. Let him answer the question, and I'm going to put you back on. Just let him answer it. Go ahead, total, Go ahead uh, it's a, Alan. It's a total fair question. And you know what? You have faith. It's a tool that was given to you. And you know what? That is great that you're able to wake up every morning with a smile on your face. But a smile on your face has nothing to do with faith. Mm -hmm. Faith is something that's instilled in us when we were born. When, our, when we were perceived by our mother and father, faith was a tool that was given to us. And long as you know that you're happy, that's mm -hmm. great. Keep on waking up with a happy face. Because you know what? That makes your day just be better for you. Your faith is there for you for when you're afraid of not do, of doing something, yet your faith says, go ahead and do it. Faith, again, is the substance. Listen to me say this one last time. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, yet evidence of the things not seen has nothing to do with the smile on your face, but that's great. Okay, all right, so so you could still be happy, but something does feel missing when you don't have faith. I think, I think there is something missing. I felt like there was something missing for me. I always felt that, and I never knew it was faith until I was really dark, and then all these people came into my life that were religious, and I, I was like, oh, this is what's missing. Herman and Friends, Lisa. Yes. It's Quig. I'm trying to get onto your show. Come on in. Uh, there's room for you now, Quig. This is Quigley, William Quigley, the famous artist that painted Trump for the White House. But how do I get it? Come on, uh, come on in. Just just click on the link, I'm and you could talk Facebook. to. Talk to Streamyard or Facebook? Uh, Streamyard. The Streamyard link. I'm Use watching. Chrome. Uh, what? Okay. What? What's the? You don't. You never sent me the link. Text. Yes, me. I did. I did send you the link. All right, I'll send you the link right now. Oh gosh. I need a producer. Okay, I'm going to send him the link. Okay, so that's William Quigley. I knew he'd have a question for you, Alan. Um, all right. See, this is why I need somebody helping me. It's hard to do everything at the same time. But, uh, yeah, people have questions. Uh, people right now, they don't have faith, and I know why, right? So they look around at the world. They say the world is in a terrible situation right now, right? The unemployment is through the roof. Uh, people are having to move out of their homes. They're having to go without a lot of things and people are dying. So in a situation like that, it's hard to get to a place where you're like, oh, God loves me. My life is horrible, but God mm -hmm. loves me. So how well, do you feel God's love if your life is like really bad? Oh my God, I've been there so many times. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead Mommy, the same thing I wanted to say is, is that some people get stuck in like something negative, even if it's small or big. Like for example, right. uh, if, if someone gets sick in your family with COVID, I mean, you have to find a way to, I wouldn't say get over it, but, but keep yourself safe. I mean, quarantine, quarantine, do something. Some people get stuck. Let's say if, if they lose a job, I mean, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel because you you cannot get stuck and whatever negative happened 
you have to face the negative, find a solution, or overcome it. And, mm -hmm. you know, don't get stuck in the negative. You know, you have to stay positive and don't let small or big stuff get in the way. And I understand that losing a job or losing a family member is tough, but at the end of the day, you have to go on because you have to take care of yourself mm -hmm. to be able to help other people. And th that's why some people focus too much on the negative, even right. if it's small or big, and they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, which could be through faith, it could <sighs> be through thinking positive or anything. Uh, Sugar, I noticed you joined on um, <laughs> under the wrong name, but that's okay. Sugar, your life is going great. You're one of the only people. I was trying. What I was trying. Sugar? What happened? Um, What's going on? Hang on, let me turn the volume off. I have, um, there's an audio sync problem, I think. Okay. Because okay. accidentally, I think you got kicked out of here, and you're my co-host. That's like the worst person <laughs> of all time to be kicked out. I don't know what the heck's going on there. And it says Benji under sugar. I don't, everything's screwed up. But uh, so hand hands, you know, the thing that I'm sometimes unable to change is my emotions. You know, sometimes I have such negative emotions. I wake up in a bad mood. I go to sleep in a bad mood. I don't see any, um, you know, lights. It's hard to find light somehow. So, you know, what should I focus on? Should I just focus on my faith, even if I don't have 100% belief in it? Well, I mean, that's, that, that's why I say to some people, I tell uh, some people I know that before you react, let's say, let's say you wake up in a bad mood and be, don't, don't react with that negative emotion, trying to find something positive to focus on. And then, you know, in, in other words, the other day someone was reacting too quickly to something that happened to her. Uh -huh. but the next time, uh, uh, take a few seconds to take a deep breath, to think before you react or you respond, or you yeah. say something that you're gonna regret. Exactly. So so you, if you wake up in a bad mood, uh, take a moment, take a break. If, if you want to listen to music, you can read the Bible, whatever you like, before you react, before to focus on the negative mood, which is don't feeling good, find something positive to think or do. And then, you know, you, you, you're going to start feeling better. Um. Okay. All right. That makes sense, Ham Hands. You're such a nice guy. What a great guy. Speaking of a great guy, I have Darren here. Um, I think maybe Alan could help Darren because Darren sent me some notes about himself that I find very interesting. Uh, I'm just going to start from here. I was tasered in 2007 when they first found out I had bipolar. Wait, who's they, Darren? Um, <clears throat> I would say the, the sheriff's department taser me. I oh, never okay. had a diagnosis, so I had to be hospitalized for that. Okay. So you had, you have bipolar, you suffer from bipolar. I suffer from bipolar too. Okay. But the, the sheriff's department tasered you. Why? What would influence them to taser you? I didn't understand that part. Well, I, um, I hallucinated and went okay. to another neighborhood. And so I guess the people in the neighborhood out of fear called the sheriff's department on me. Oh, okay, okay. That must have been horrible. Um, okay, so you were tasered and then you were, you're a pharmacist, is that right? That's correct. Okay, so you're a pharmacist, you're Darren the pharmacist. Uh, when I brought the database before the board, they retaliated and suspended me for 17 months. I self-reported, I di uh, bipolar died. Gnosis in 2008, they had years to order evaluations. Now they're holding up my reinstatement when I finally have a job at 170,000 a year. Uh, what kind of difficulties have resulted from living like a homeless person? So you went from uh, making 170,000 a year to being homeless? Well, no, I was making 140,000 a year. And then because of not being able to get hired because of 
Um, okay. I was going through things like not being able to fix my car and not paying for basic utilities, et cetera. Jeez. Okay. 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 So that's, that's a very tough situation. You went from a very uh, nice lifestyle to a really tough lifestyle. You had to walk seven miles round trip to go into town. Is that the situation you're in now? It's not as bad. I, I had a job in Wisconsin for about a year. So I, I made some money for a while, but still having a struggle. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go to Alan. I have no idea what to tell you to do. I, I'm, I'm bad at life too. Okay. So Alan, what should me and what should, uh, you know, this guy, Darren, he's such a nice guy. In fact, his uh, avatar on Facebook is Kermit the Frog. That's what ma uh, first made me notice him. So we got to love this guy. And now he's going to be a regular on Kermit and Friends. What, what do we do in this kind of situation? We're walking seven miles to get into town. We're being tasered. Yeah, that's wild. You know, um, sorry about the tasering, but you know, the one thing that you should do, it's Darren, right? Yeah, Darren. Yeah, Darren. Yeah. You know, one thing that I do when, when things get rough and I, you know, it's like, what do I do? So that experiment or that meditation that I did with you in the, the beginning, mm -hmm. I don't know if you were in the, heard the whole thing. It, yeah, I heard it. Not only put yourself in that light, but also put whatever it is behind that door. Like I said, like for instance, your pharmacy, your pharmacist, you're looking for a job. Put yourself with that job in the light and surround yourself with the light. Look, ask and ye shall receive. Ask for it. But unless you ask for it, and I don't mean, uh, you know, you've got to really put yourself into your subconscious mind so that the subconscious mind understands and so that the universe reveals and gives you what it is that you need. I promise you, you do that and you surround yourself in the light and love of the universe and put whatever it is that you need inside that light, it will prevail and you will have it. It will come back to you. Look, you've already been down here and now you're right here. You'll go back up here again. I promise you. I can tell by looking at you. I can see your surroundings. I know you're a good guy. Mm -hmm. I know that you're not full of shit. So I know that you will get back to where you were, Darren. Well, I would like to try to elaborate on this database. Um, it's, it's something where it criminalizes you nationally. and It can go away. It can go away. Well, I've well, seen it's, it. been, it's been lingering for a decade. Okay. But now you've already okay. gotten positions, even though you have that database. It's on that database, right? Yes, but the the position in Wisconsin was with a company that's a non-subscriber of the database. What kind of pharmacists are you? Well, I worked in retail. And Are you so, licensed? So you're a licensed pharmacist? Uh, right now, it's it's under suspension. Uh, you were and licensed. It, yep. It's, the suspension was due to uh, trying to bring the database before the board. Uh -huh. What database were you trying to bring before the board? You don't, you don't know, don't remember. I can't hear you. I said, what database were you bringing to the board? What is this database that you're talking about? Well, it's called the STEAM database and it was used mm -hmm. by, by retail establishments Basically, mm -hmm. if one company puts you on it, 75,000 companies that subscribe will not hire you. Uh -huh. Why were you put on the database? What did you do? Well, I, I told you I'm bipolar. 
So I was working a 12 hour shift and I take a drug called Depakote. It's not uh -huh. a controlled substance. Okay. So your bipolarism. So because I needed it when I was working a 12 hour shift yeah. as an emer emergency supply, which is allowed uh -huh. by law. Hey Darren, let me ask you a question. This is good. So let me ask you a question. How old are you? 51. All right. So I got by nine years. When did you get diagnosed as being bipolar? 2007. 2007. So how old were you then? Uh, late 30s. Okay. So, and when did you first start noticing that you were bipolar? Well, I didn't know much about that disease, uh -huh. except what I learned in school. Uh -huh. uh, and I started noticing, um, I guess, uh, obsessing with certain things about math and religion. Right before uh, data, I had data, 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 right? Yeah. Numbers yeah. and data and all that, right? Darren, yeah. do me a favor. Do me a favor right now. I want you to close your eyes. Just close your eyes and, and just listen to me, okay? And Darren, what I want you to do is I want you to start counting with me backwards. We're going to do this in a number. And we're going to go 10 and your eyes are gonna get deeper, and you're gonna go deeper. Nine, and you're gonna go deeper. Eight, go deeper, keep your eyes closed. Seven, go deeper. Six, deeper. Five, deeper. Four, deeper. Three, even deeper. Two, way down deeper one and when i go to zero darren i want us to go back before you were 30. i want you to go back to the age of 10 years old zero and we're now at 10 years old darren and I want you to tell me the first thing that comes in your mind right now as you being 10 years old. What's the first thing coming into your mind? Uh, I broke my leg mm -hmm. and, and my dad put a splint on my leg and took me to the hospital in his car. Okay. And so what happened? They put a cast on you then or is that what they did? Yeah, yeah, they put a cast on. Uh huh. Was your did the, how did you break your leg? How did you fall and break your leg? I had a bicycle that was a chopper style bike, mm -hmm. and um, basically skidded in some gravel, and I broke both bones in my left leg. Gotcha. So so let me ask you a question. So this is at the age of ten. Let's go to the age of twenty now. Let's move forward ten more years and go to the age of twenty. What's the first thing that you did that you can remember right now at the age of twenty? Because I'm so busy, but I want to I want to show my Well, I can remember celebrating my birthday at uh, Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, going out in the ocean. You had a great time, didn't you? Yeah. You were enjoying the sun and the water and the sand out there in South Carolina at Myrtle Beach. Pretty women there in Myrtle Beach, too. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful place. Wouldn't hey, you love Alan? to just stay in that place right now? Well, I, I've been to various beaches all over the world, so yeah, I can I can enjoy on, being at a beach right now. Yep. Alan, gotcha. you're, I'm sorry, excuse me, everybody. This this uh, this has been the most popular uh, podcast I've ever done. I want you to help Darren, but I just want to tell everybody that's like calling me off the hook right now and just like calling me over and over and over, like Quig. 
that like I I don't know what to do right now because everybody wants to talk to Alan Quig. What do you want from Alan? Huh? What What's going on, Quig? Well, I'm in the shower and I'm really busy. And I wanted to call and give you my support because you helped me out so much here in my life. Okay, quick. You, I can't function. But I'm in the shower and I want to just quickly call in because I have about five minutes. You know me, my schedule's so busy. I mean, I have all these people and politicians and actors and musicians Ooh, to want to meet with me every minute. It's William Quigley. All right, thanks for calling from the shower, Quig. I'm gonna get to you. Um, I'm gonna get to everyone. I just really want to help Darren here. Darren, here's what I'd like to do. I'm gonna give Lisa. Lisa has my number. Right, I'll call you back. I would like. I would like to do about 30 minutes with you. Oh, that's I've helped right. people with bipolar. I've helped people with PTSD. I've helped people with sleeping disorders. I'd like to help you personally. Lisa, give him my number, and I'll okay. take about 30 minutes with Darren at another time where we can do a one-on-one -on -one and find out exactly what's stopping him from doing what he wants to do. Okay, okay. I'm going to get back to Darren. Um, I just want to say hi to my neighbor, Brandon. Brandon, uh, what do you think of the show so far? <laughs> it's pretty phenomenal. It's good, right? Isn't Alan great? Definitely. Oh I've been hypnotized. <laughs> <laughs> I know, me too. So Alan has been so uh, gracious and I'm just, I feel blessed right now that he's here. My phone is ringing off the hook. People are calling me like over and over and over and over to speak with Alan, but I want to help every person. Brandon, your life is pretty perfect. You don't need any help, right? I mean, everybody needs help. Oh, really? No one has a perfect life. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's a good point, Brandon. Okay, so Brandon, um, you've been missing for like a week. Where have you been? <laughs> it was Thanksgiving. I was with my mother. Oh, you're the best. So, so Brandon, we're gonna help this new guy. Um, okay, let me read you the notes on this new guy. Then we're gonna get back to Darren and we're gonna get to, to Eric and we're gonna get to Sugar and we're gonna get to Peter and Han -ham, Ham Hands and Kevin and, and everybody and what Quig and, and Corey. What? What happened to Quigley? He's in the shower right now, but let me just read you, Brandon, um, these notes on uh, DJ Frenchie. I used to be called the devil because I would liberate dealers of their funds. I'm a disciple of Bushido, the warrior code, which propelled me through pursuits. I was a frontline warrior during the riots. I have reborn myself as the fighting preacher after I turned to the, let the light into my heart. Um, I will use a pseudonym, uh, DJ Smooth, but you're the devil. Uh, why are we called the devil, uh, DJ Smooth? Because, right. <laughs> what? <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> really? Back in, um, <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> really? I mean, you gotta hide your face. Your you gotta hide your face. Are you, are you around a I'm, bunch I'm of here, people that I'm you here, hide I'm your face? Incognito. I'm yeah, here why? incognito. Why you got to hide your face? Are you afraid of something? Absolutely. Yeah, the, yeah darkness. You, you got the dark shades on. Family, You're right? totally afraid of the light. Well, he was called the devil. Uh, well, uh, he's, he's bullshit. You think he's bullshit? But is anybody uh, bullshit? Totally. Aren't, aren't we all Anybody dark? that can't show their face and talk out loud and, you know, there you go. Take it off. There you go, man. <laughs> Is now, it now, 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 to you. now you're talking. Yeah. Now we'll listen to you. Yeah, the shades stay. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to put this on your face. You can't hear you. But go ahead. Now I hear you loud and clear. So what we do is, when I was in Walton Prison. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> go ahead, uh, DJ. Um, uh, give him a minute. Give him a minute. That guy. I don't know if I should kick out that guy. I'm thinking I should. Yeah, I think you should. Yeah, I just kicked him out. Okay, so Corey and uh, Quigley <laughs> and everybody else, uh, you could come in. Everybody, it's, uh, Maggie. Attention, Maggie. Maggie, if you're watching, please come in. We need you desperately. Um, everybody that's been trying to come in, I just kicked DJ Smooth. You know what, though? It's very hard. When you have somebody like DJ Smooth, he sent me a big email with all these notes about him. He obviously wanted to be on the show. He might be a little insecure. 
Um, I've experienced that before with people that want to come on the show, but really there's nothing to be insecure about. We are all God's children, all of us here. So even people that are have been called the devil, I've been called you know, the C word, every word I've been called, but I'm still here. Well, I run this show, so you guys have no choice. But you know, <laughs> even, no matter what, you're you're welcome here. So DJ Smooth, I feel bad for you because you know you were you were embarrassed to show your face, and I just feel bad for you in general. And you know, Alan, you're so gracious. I just feel bad for people like that. So DJ Smooth, if you're still watching, I would welcome you back. But first, let's hear from one of our sponsors. Maggie. Hi, Maggie. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm so excited that you're here. I'm so excited that you're here. Okay. So right now we have a lot of people watching and we have our guests, Eric, Darren, Alan, Brandon, uh, Douche, the Monkey, Kevin, uh, Peter, Ham Hands, and some others, and hopefully Corey soon. And we want to tell everybody that's involved in the show the opportunities the business opportunities that we have here. Because not only are you praying, are you getting closer to the Lord? Are you getting hypnotized? Are you getting spiritual guidance from Alan? But you're gonna make money from this show, okay? So, I mean, God liked money, right? He did, he wanted an abundance. So Maggie, why don't you tell everybody about the opportunities from Kermit and Friends? I am so excited to be here. It was so fun to even listen to um, the broadcast so far. You guys are great and so funny. And I am so excited to be able to share just what has been a blessing in my life. When I was hearing from Alan and he was talking about um, things get brought into your life and it's fate. And I think... Um, you know, four and a half years ago, I was blessed to have this opportunity of being an entrepreneur come into my life alongside what I already do. And we know right now it's such like a crazy time of um, just life with COVID and jobs not looking the same. And we don't even know if jobs will ever look the same. So I wanted to take just a little bit of time um, today, just maybe five minutes or so to share this opportunity that has totally changed my life. And you guys, honestly, this was not an easy decision to make to become an entrepreneur alongside what I already do. I am a teacher. I am still a fourth grade teacher. Uh, I had no money at the time to add anything else into my life. I had no time to do anything. And I didn't really know what people were going to think of me starting this new gig. But if you have not heard of a company called Arbonne, you have to listen into this. Arbonne is a company that has been around for 40 years. And you guys, during this global pandemic, Arbonne grew 32%. And I keep thinking to myself, like, why on earth can a company during a global pandemic grow 32%? But I really think it's two things, you guys. One is so many people right now are focused on their health. So what is going into their body and what they're putting on their body, especially now with COVID going on, we're so in tune with making sure that we are staying healthy. And the second reason is people are looking for opportunities to be their own bosses. And that's exactly what being an entrepreneur gets you. I just want to share quickly what makes Arbonne so different and just a few businesses, um, business benefits of owning your own business business is. Arbonne, if you guys haven't heard, is a company that has 450 consumable products. And it's somebody something for everybody in your life. So it goes from babies all the way to um, those of us that need aging skin. Um, we have something for any everybody. If it goes on your skin or in your skin or in your body or your hair, we have something for you. We are certified vegan. We are gluten-free, non-GMO. Uh, we have a sports nutrition line. We have um, personal care for everybody. We have a huge nutrition line. Uh, we are also, um, we have an ingredient policy that's unmatched. That's what makes Arbonne so different. We have an unparalleled, we follow the European Union guidelines. So we ban over 2,000 ingredients when the FDA is about 14. 
We are a certified B corporation, which really means that we value people and planet over profit. And I wanted to share really quick with you guys the benefits of owning your own business before you guys get back to the show with Alan that I'm so excited to keep listening to. And let me ask you guys a few questions. What if you could earn a little bit of extra money? What if you could be your own boss? What if you could um, choose who you work with? What if you could set your own schedule? What if you could improve your overall well-being? How if you, how what would you do if you could change people's lives? Which one of these would resonate with you guys? I know for me, I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to choose my own schedule, and I definitely wanted to make more money as being a school teacher. There is so many other benefits to building your own business. The people in this company are amazing. They are building homes in Haiti. They are helping women in Africa after the genocide build businesses. We are changing the face of foster care here in the United States. It is such an amazing company. And the personal growth you go through when you start your own business is one of the coolest aspects. And you get to make a difference in this business. You get to either change people's wealth or you get to change people's health. So in closing, I just have one more question to ask you. What would you do if you had extra time or extra money? Thank you guys so much. If you found yourself just being intrigued at all with um, what I was saying about this company, maybe wanting to learn a little bit more, get with Elisa and I would love to share more or have Elisa help you guys. Thank you so much for letting me on. Yay. Thank you, Maggie. Yes, I had to say it as fast as I possibly could because I know how important Alan is. Yes, you're important too, Maggie. You're helping us. <laughs> you're bringing abundance to the Kermit and Friends community through Arbon and the Arbon products. I mean, they're really good, right? You have yeah. uh, health food shakes. You have uh, somebody just hit me up to get the Honey Beige Foundation Cream. Mm -hmm. uh, so the foundation, it's great for Christmas. And this is a this is a pretty good opportunity, in my opinion. Like I said before, the unemployment is through the roof. Barry, you don't have a job, right? You're unemployed. You could use this. <laughs> no, I'm actually employed. You're employed, Barry? Are you sure about that? Yeah, I'm self-employed. Self-employed. Okay, got it. I do my porns. I do it all. Okay. I, I, I have my agency still. I do it all. Okay, okay. So porn, I mean, it, does that count as employment? I feel like that's more of a, like a gig. I'm self-employed. Put it that way. You're self-employed. Okay, you make content, but I you can't even content. make content right now, Barry. You don't even have access to a computer. You don't have access. I'm in the mental ward. If what else do you expect? How else am I supposed to sell this product? Okay, Barry. Actually, what do you mean sell product? Do you want to sell our Ar Arbon products? That'd probably be no, good. You know a lot of people. I'm not interested. I'm, I'm not interested. All right, all right. I'm going to ask Corey. Corey, do you need a business opportunity? Like what? Weren't you just listening to Maggie? Um, I've been trying to get in here. Oh, well, welcome in the show. As you know, we were speaking. Well, actually, you probably don't know. Have you been watching at all? I've been I've been listening, but not paying attention. Because I've been trying to get in here. You look pretty handsome right now, Corey. Thank you. Cool. You're looking pretty good yourself. Thanks. Hmm. All right. So but no, I, I'm employed. So yep. and I'm consider essential. Uh, you're essential. Okay, so Maggie, Maggie here, who's very generous to come on Kermit and Friends. Sugar, I don't know where you are. I'm trying to put you on. Sugar's my co-host. I, I got to ask somebody, maybe Eric. Eric, can you help me produce this show? I really need help. Today has been, I think it's been a good show, but there's been so many people that are trying to get in and calling me and everything. It's so confusing. Eric, mm -hmm. can you help? Um, unfortunately, I can't help. At least I'm really so busy with the work that I'm doing that I'm literally booked just trying to pay my own bills. You know, when you're living in paycheck to paycheck and you're still working your day job and you're just smooth sailing all the way home, you're going to get to the other side of the tunnel. You really don't have time to look back. It's kind of like an old entrepreneur friend I, I met after in college at Santa Monica College. He said if you're he, he drove like an RA, had a private jet. And he said, you know, if you're driving a, a race car, a nice sports car, you know what's going to happen if you look in the rearview mirror when you're driving really fast right you're going to freaking crash 
Okay. So I'm still driving really fast in my sports car. That's all there is to it. And, um, you know, I've got gigs lined up. I don't know what the future holds, but I do know if I can make, I don't know, a teacher salary, sales on the phone, you know, that I'm doing great. And if I can set up my career to still make a million dollars a year, and stay in touch with my friends, I'm doing great to each their own. Well, that's so funny because Maggie is also a teacher and she yeah. sells products. So that's perfect yeah. for you. Yeah, so there's this thing called the real world, people that live in the real world where they have to work for a living. And yeah, we're not familiar with that over here. So uh, let's just move on. Um, what, a real world or reality? I don't know what he's talking about. There's a guy here that I don't know who it is. His name is Matt. Matt, welcome yeah, yeah. to Parliament and Friends. Do you have a question for Alan? Yeah, yeah. No, it's nothing to do with Alan. I just, I've been really impacted by Stephen French. The guy you had on before and i think that he should make another appearance on the stream like i spoke to him i spoke he to him was... a lot and i do matt, expect him matt that guy was kind of a jerk to alan he, alan he wasn't, i i he wasn't hold... a jerk no hear me out matt hear me out i hold alan in very high regard he's one of the most successful and best personalities i've ever met in my life and i felt like that guy uh what's his name What's the guy's name that you're called? Uh, uh, Stephen French. Like, it's really good. Like, honestly, no, he, was he, he hits home. No, but he was disrespecting my guest. He was wearing a mask. And then he was just, like, laughing. I felt like he didn't take the church service very seriously. I think that he was he was wearing the mask and he was laughing because you guys were, like, slating him about the mask. He shouldn't have to reveal his pers He shouldn't have to reveal his identity to show his personality. Okay. It doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay. it's... it's what is what what's on the inside that matters and you you threw him off and now he, he probably feels quite bad about it do you think he's sad i don't, oh, I don't know sad i don't know here, Matt. i think we need to see him back on here and we yeah. need to hear what he has to say and i'm not happy about it okay all right okay matt you seem like a nice guy uh corey do you think i should take what matt's saying um, I, I agree i do agree with him to a Steven point needs to be back on here and he needs to be able to express his reviews Right. The, thing is, the guy that. too. I mean, he obviously doesn't know how to. He only knows how to. He's on sites. I what I gather was seeing that he's on sites. He knows how to troll the simpletons. So that's what he's trying to do is troll. But he didn't know how to handle when it. No, was he's not a troll. He speaks a lot of truth. I've I've seen a lot of his a lot of his stuff. I say give him a chance. Back on it. You guys, let me ask my advisor what he thinks. Barry, what should I do with this guy? He was wearing a mask and he was laughing. And he wasn't taking Kermit and Friends seriously at all. And I was very offended. He wasn't treating my guests with respect. What should I do with this guy? His name's Steven. You know what? You know what? You're just a pretty oh, face. No, you need to start right. seeing the inside of people. Excuse me? You're just a pretty face. You They're need to start seeing the inside of people. You need They're to It's not all about the exterior, you know? So you're saying... Wait, what are you saying? I'm saying everyone's on here listening to you because you're good looking, but at the end of the day, it's what's on the inside. You didn't listen to Stephen French's inside. He had no inside. I'm vulnerable on this show, Matt. He wasn't. That's no, all honestly, I ask. I think, I think you've lowered yourself today. You've lowered yourself from other podcasts. I watch this every week. You've lowered yourself. You watch this every week? Yeah, every single week. Hmm. You've lowered yourself. Hmm. Bring Stephen French back or I'm unsubscribing. Wow. Oh my God, I can't believe that. I mean, I, I'm very flattered he called me pretty, but <laughs> did I lower myself? Uh, Alan, what do you think? First of all, listen, if he has to unsubscribe himself, that's his own thing. But that guy, whoever he was, the devil, whoever he was, he was not real. And it was like he was yeah. trying to interrupt your broadcast. I don't care who, where, how he trolls, I don't care. Yeah. Something told me that guy was no good and I brought it out of him. And that's why he started laughing and he couldn't talk. Absolutely. But the thing is, since we are church service it, and I have this bracelet, I don't know if I showed this to you before, Alan, but this bracelet says, what would Jesus do? And I feel like Jesus would invite Stephen French back on. Bring him show. back. I would love to talk to the guy, but he's not going to talk straight. All right. Well, we'll see if we can get to him. Ham hands. Uh, should I discount somebody just because they were wearing a mask? And I do feel like he kind of disrespected. It Alan. wasn't. It wasn't wearing the mask, Lisa. It, it was yeah, just yeah. the whole persona. The persona. Yeah, it was like he was on something, and like all he was doing was wanting to wreck your broad, you know, your block. Yeah. Your, your yeah, yeah. 
whatever this is. Yeah. So, so, you know, I, I relate to this ham hands. I don't know if you relate to this at all, but when I was on the Howard Stern show, people yeah. despised me. They, you're very loved on the Howard Stern show, um, ham, but I, I was hated on there and, well, people, I mean, and people thought that I was just doing it to, um, for attention. And, and a lot of these feelings that people watching this are feeling about Steven, uh, people have felt about me. Well, I mean, not, not everybody hated you, you know. Oh, I mean, thanks. thanks, Ham. You know, a lot of people like you, and a lot of people thought you were maybe a little crazy. You know, a lot of people saw different way, different sides of you, and you know. Yeah. But but that that guy, you know, next time, next time, you know, let him let, let him say whatever he wants to say, and yeah, that's and a good you, idea. You respond, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, Ham Hands, yeah. you're so almost biblical. I, I, I just love this guy, Ham Hands. Uh, Corey, what about you? You've had a, a like a 10 year feud with our other fan from here, uh, Honest Frank. Is there forgiveness when somebody does something like that? When somebody doesn't respect you? How do you feel about it? The things that he's done in his past and he doesn't want to repent. This is why that's between him and god but th what he's done i can't forgive for him with myself really so you cannot forgive no matter what not the things that he's done in his past and he's not willing to repent and he laughs and jokes about it like it's nothing yeah what about the things that he's willing to do in the future to make up for it that's that's a good one i like that eric yeah, if he's given it another chance, you know, you give somebody a handout and they blow it all and they give and then you say, OK, we'll renew the contract. We'll give you another handout. And he repents. What about that? You know, if he can if he can make it up to to his children, especially God's children. Yeah. Brandon, any good dates this week? I can't hear you, Brandon. You're muted. It was Thanksgiving. Give me a break. <laughs> really? There's no dates on Thanksgiving week? No. Everyone's out no? of town. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, that's true. My Pretty much my whole building's out of town. Let's see what, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Peter, are you there? I don't even see you. Peter, you were like the only one uh, that I saw uh, actually hello? closing his eyes during uh, Alan's uh, hypnotism. Peter. I closed it most of the time, but I um, opened it to see if I was on cam a few times. You were. So, I, you know what I mean? I wasn't that relaxed, but uh, yeah, it, you it did was your nice. Best. It's nice, right? Do you have a yeah. question for the Alan? Connection isn't, yes, I do. Um, um, I've heard of something called life between lives uh, hypnosis, and it's where the hypnotist brings the subject into um, a state of consciousness that is um, between people's lives. Like apparently something happens in between when you're born or when you die and when you're born. And um, the hypnotist takes them to that person and extracts data from it about what, uh, about what, what happens. Um, have yeah. you ever heard of that? Oh yeah, it's called transgression. And yeah, you know, there's all different types of hypnosis. There's stage hypnosis where People get on stage and they do crazy things. I'm sure you've seen it at one point or another on TV or, or at a fair. Or, and that's a total different type of hypnosis. Then there's the hypnosis like I did, which is more of a spiritual type of hypno, hypnotherapy. Uh, what I am, I'm actually board certified and licensed clinical hypnotherapist. So I help people with smoking. I help people like the gentleman earlier, Darren, with the polar bipolarism. I, I help people with that. I've also been able to do exactly what you're talking about. And that is caused from our DNA. And it's interesting that you're talking about this because I was talking about this with Elisa last week. You know, when we are created, we're created from man and woman and it comes from the sperm. And that sperm has DNA in it. Well, guess what? There's more beyond that. Somewhere your parents got their DNA from their parents and their parents got their parents and their parents. So you can go all the way back and you can definitely go into that. And it's all in the DNA. 
And once we get into and communicate with the subconscious mind, the subconscious okay, mind will take you back you. that way. Yeah, go ahead. Peter. Go ahead. Hey, sorry, my connection isn't the best. Um, so What's sorry if question, there's any. Uh, yeah, my question. Um, um, I noticed that you're very into spirituality, but then in um, when you're talking about um, regression or life between lives, you seem to take the view that it's happening from that those memories are happening from the the physical world, not not the spiritual world. So I thought that was an interesting. Um, like irony about you, I would have thought that you would have said that um, a spirit is connected to the body and that spirit has knowledge. Do you believe yeah, in you both of those? I do believe in both of them. In fact, we're born with the spirit, right? The God gives us the spirit, the spirit that dwells within us. However, there's also such thing as our bodies are made up of DNA. And as that DNA, and you tap into the subconscious mind from where that DNA comes from, that's where you are able to go beyond and talk and bring things out. And it, you know what? It, it's, it's Hypnotherapy is not any kind of miracle cure or anything like that. The person that's in front of you that you're having a session with or is having a session with you is got to be willing, number one. Like, for instance, if a person wants to, and I don't mean to get away from your transgression, but it wants to stop smoking, for instance, or lose weight, it can be done, but they've got to want to have the will. And that's where the faith comes in again. That's what I was talking about with the faith. You got to have all of that in order for it to work. But when you're going back, why do you want to take somebody back before they were born? Well, what's the reason for that? So that's not a lot of what I do. What I do is I take people back like, and it's welcome to see this guy back again. Um, I take people back to like have problems with their uh, health Alan, Alan, or they have problems with hurting Alan, let themselves. Alan, let me stop you there. Why do you lie so much? You're living a life of lies. You know you're not a hypnotist. No one can oh, be yeah. hypnotized. He is a hypnotist. Oh. He's not. Oh, a yeah. yeah he is. As, a, as a woman of God, you should know that that's not possible. No, it a is woman possible. Of God. A clinical. I'm uh, not a woman of God. I'm a woman, no. of, woman of God, and he Alan, is a clinical. Alan, you can take them white jeans and your lies straight out of here, mate. You talk shit, and you got Frenchy out of here, and Frenchy needs to be back in here. I'm not leaving until Frenchy's back in here right now. What's up with this guy, Maggie? Maggie, what the heck is up with these people? They're crazy, right? Listen, I mean, you've got people like that that are going to be like that. Be that gone. Satan? Be I mean, gone. Exactly. Listen, don't you know, first of all, Elisa, yes. the devil loves to interrupt something that is going great. Yeah, and, well, the closer to God the, you are, Alan, Absolutely. The and more this, first of all, notice he brought it in by the devil first. The devil was mentioned first. So the devil had to get his name out there. He yeah. had to bring himself and manifest it. Then he tries to manifest himself and he tries to hold himself accountable with a mask and glasses across his face. And I, with my spirit, called him on it. And I hope you're hearing this guy because he I laughed when he took it off and he started laughing. It was like, uh-huh. I got your bluff. I called you. And you, you right Alan, now Alan. are trying to defend somebody Alan. who tried Alan. to interrupt something. Well, Alan, go ahead, Alan, my little Alan. guy. Oh, Alan, I'm going to let you win your win me over here right now. I will always I win be you over. You know why? I want to be hypnotized. I have one I and be one hypnotized. thing only, and that's God. And you don't have him. Alan, I want you to hypnotize me in front of everyone. <laughs> I'm not an inside you know man. What? I'm, Alan, I'm not an inside man. How are you going to do it if I'm not an inside you man? You know what? Prove it, prove it to everyone. You, to everyone. Can't, you can't be because you don't have faith, brother. I do have faith. I believe in God for 18 years now. Is that how old you are? 18? Yeah. Aww. Alan, hypnotize okay. me. Come on. Aww, That's great. Good. That's good for you, man. So you've been believing in God since you were 18. That is so great. But let me tell you something. Without Alan, you having any kind of faith, you zero. can't believe in anything. Alan, I'm asking you, as a non-inside man, to be hypnotized. Come on, 
I'll see it. You know what? I'll be happy to do it, and I'll give you a well, personal then. call and do it. No, personally. no, right here. Gonna... Right here it in takes... front of the world. It oh, you can't do it. You can't do it. Hey, Matt. Hey, Matt. Can't Matt do it. He's not open to it. He's, he's not open to it. That's why. Uh, he's, it, Matt is not open to it, right, Matt, Maggie? I should not <laughs> let that keep going, right? That's ridiculous. This that has been ridiculous. so fun. You oh. have a really fun show. It's 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 great. <laughs> Thanks, Maggie. So, Maggie, um, is there any you know final words that you have to the fans of Kermit and Friends about the Arbon community and the opportunity that we're giving everyone here? Yeah, I'm so thankful that you guys all let me on and you welcomed me with open arms. I know um, job opportunities can be scary and nerve wracking and not knowing what's going on. Um, it's not the stream of, okay, I'm going to the corporate job or I'm going to my teaching job or I'm going right. to the retail store. So it is different. And, um, but it's been amazing in my life and I would just love to help other people and share the gifts that it's done for my family. It has given my family the means to have extra income. So, uh, I went to Europe and traveled with my husband because of my Arbonne um, paycheck. I was able to help my kids with their sports because of my Arbonne paycheck. And it's just a really awesome plan B that has turned into a plan A into my life. And I think right now, everybody's looking for a way to have extra, whether that's extra time or extra money. And yes. what better way to do a job in your pajamas and slippers, right? I mean, that's... Please. I'd like to do that kind of job more often that I can just do it for my phone. So um, I would love to uh, share more. If anybody out there would like to um, hear more, I would be happy to give more information. Thank you so much. What a blessing to have people like Maggie in my life. What a blessing. <laughs> but speaking of opposite of a blessing, here's Matt. Matt, you're back. Eliza, I would like you to talk to Stephen French, just you. No bullshit from Dave. Uh, I don't want, I want to see any of that. I want to see you talk to Stephen French alone. I think he's got a lot to say. I think he's got a lot of personality. I want to be in here when he says it. I want you to see my live reaction. He's got a lot, a lot of very contradictory views. I think, I think he should be on here. And I think he should be able to voice his opinion in front of all 36 people in here. He's not even here, Matt. He left. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure that Stephen French can make himself. Um, hold on, I do have I've messaged him before. Hold on, let hey, me hey, just. Uh, I, I have a question for you. Just, What's your deal with Stephen French? Is he like your brother or something? Stephen French has been a big part of my life since the age of sixteen, April thirteenth, and I really think, who the fuck is that? That's William Quigley, the famous artist. Hey, Quig. How you doing? So I want to introduce you to I was everyone. Shower, I was going to call you from the shower. That would have been good, I guess. Wouldn't um, great? So, so this is William Quigley. He's a famous artist. If you want to look him up, just Google William Quigley art. Very famous. He, he's done paintings for the White House. He's a big Trump supporter. He he painted a picture of Donald wait, Trump. Wait a second. I don't know if that's a good introduction. How do you want me to introduce you? Well, you said I'm a big Trump supporter, and I don't. Well, you are a big Trump proper supporter. Proper thing to expose about a good friend of yours at this moment. Okay, he's not a Trump supporter. No, he's, I didn't say that Biden, either. I didn't say that either. He's an enormous Biden supporter. I would rather just be introduced as, you know, our friendship, at least. Okay, so this is my one of my best friends in the world. Mm. And this is how I know he's a great friend. This yeah. is how I know. So when I was with Benji, I wasn't talking to any men, including friends. I didn't even talk to any male friends. And Quigley was one of them. But he didn't give up on our friendship. So that's how I appreciate him. That's why I appreciate him. He never gives up on anything. He's never given up on anything in his life. He, he's a man my of mother. faith. My mother and the Lord. You gave up on your mother and the Lord? No, I said I, I, that's because of my mother and the Lord. Okay. Okay. So, faith. Quig, Quig, were you able to see Alan... My friend yeah, Alan. I, I, I listened to the whole show. I've been trying to call in for a long time, at least. Okay, so I'm happy you're here now. Do you have any questions I can't for Alan? I'm here now. I thought the show was going to be over. It was supposed to be over like 30 minutes ago. I was in the shower. I thought it was going to be great. Yeah. Well, why were you taking a shower in the middle of Kermit and Friends? Well, I had to take a shower because I had an appointment and I didn't want to miss the show. 
Okay. Well, now you're on the Isn't show. Isn't that loyal? Isn't that a good loyal thing to do? You know, I love the loyalty of you. <laughs> I love your show, Elise. I got to say, I think you're benefiting a lot of people. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really do. I'm so, I'm so happy for you. Oh. Like, I've known Elise. I used to sleep in the same bed with her. But All right. Were, but nothing ever happened. We were just friends. No. We were no, just no, good no. friends because she yeah. had a mouse in her apartment and she was afraid of it. So when I used to live in New York City. And then she every, met Benji and, you know, yeah. fell in love. And she's in love with Benji. And Benji's a tremendous guy, I hear. And he is. Um, I, you know, we all love Benji because of you know, his public image, but we don't know him personally like Elise does. So, but, you know, I think it's fantastic what you're doing. I am really enjoying it. I'll tell you, I had nothing to live What's for. That? I was almost suicidal. What's that? That's Corey. That's oh, me. Someone's joining in. Trump yeah. 2020, baby. Yeah, another I'm Trump the MF out of this. Yeah, yes. Corey's a great guy. He's also a lover of Trump. Um, so, so did you experience? He's also a lover of Trump. Yeah, he is. He's a great guy. What a... He's one of my best friends. He's okay. another one of my best friends. So this is Corey here. And then, um, so what? What was your nice feeling hit. on Alan the hypnotist? He's brand new here. Like I've, you know, had you, and I've had, I've interviewed you At before. Least you hear that weird noise? Everything. That's, that's Corey. Oh, I know why. Um. Nice, nice to meet you, Quigley. Hey, how yeah. are you? What is your name? Corey. Hey, Corey, how, how are you? Good? I'm doing pretty good. Having a nice Sunday? Oh, yeah, I just woke up about an hour ago. Oh, really? That's, that's what's nice about the West Coast. Like, here, it's going to be dark in an hour. So, Quigley, what was your experience with Alan the Hypnotist? Do you have any feelings on him? Yeah, I mean, he was, he was great. I mean, you know, anybody that's willing to devote that much time to what they believe in and, you know, faith and... I love that too. I, I think that's I think that's what the show's kind of about. And Absolutely. he was willing to help. I mean, I think sometimes we get caught up in judging other people no matter what their, you know, criteria, priority. But you know, your your um ambition to have this show was to help other people and you know, even the guy in the mask coming on and you know, being himself and the other guy, you know, ripping Alan apart. I mean, that's gonna be part of the of the show. I mean, it's the whole you know whole world i mean let's face it you've been in this yeah you've been in this before mm -hmm. you had your own experiences and i know many of them personally and you know i have my own battles to deal with all the time as well because of what i do and you know when you have a public persona you're gonna have you know you're gonna have different opinions well the thing about alan is he's never done anything like this before so mm -hmm. i was actually a little worried um he was fantastic yeah no no i wasn't worried about i knew he'd be fantastic i knew that but I wasn't sure how he would feel about people with their different opinions because I knew he would be loved here. I knew that, right? Yeah. But I wasn't sure. Like, Brandon, you're kind of new to this kind of thing. Uh, and you're not even on Twitter, so you don't even know what's going on. Corey kind of looks familiar. Who? Corey. Corey? Well, yeah, he's a famous Maybe I guy. saw him on the last shows. Yeah, yeah, no, he's famous. Um, so, Brandon, do you want to warn Alan about anything? But you've enjoyed this. You haven't had any drawbacks. Is that Brandon? I love Brandon. Yeah. Brandon, how are you? <laughs> now, that's a great guy, everybody. He's, he's quiet. So handsome. He doesn't say much, but by, I'll tell you what, off camera, he's not quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, that I know. That's true. He is pretty quiet on camera, but he's not off camera. That's why I want, I need to get him drunk for this show. That's the thing. You know what I got to say about spirituality? Brandon, I still have your cup. I have you your cup what? here. May I say something about spirituality? Because that's what the show's based on. I think, you know, you're going to have a lot of different people coming from a lot of different sectors and faith. You know, yeah. beliefs and you know I'm someone who my father for years told me to go to church I lost my father to the COVID this year and two days before my birthday I'm back in and you know you know, whatever you believe in spirituality you believe in everything like, and my father used to tell me every time I saw him go to make sure you go to church I was raised Catholic make sure you go to church and you know I was involved with a Hindu woman I lived in India you know I lived in China you know I lived in different places in the world lived in Italy you know for a year lived in Spain you know very different you know lived in venezuela for almost a year and you know very different faiths very different practices towards faith and then i got kind of like i have a really dear friend who's going through a tough time right now and she's kind of you know into the same denomination that you're interested in involved in and i think you know action living your life you know believe in what you believe quickly in. quickly let me yeah. just stop you there yeah i was listening just before and i heard something about you saying we were just friends with you and eliza and stuff like that but I have a feeling there's something deeper there for you. Yeah. Huh? Is there anything? Is, is there anything more going on between you and Eliza? Like, 
Alisa. I don't really know. I mean, I'm Alisa. on the East Coast. She's on the West Coast. You know, uh, do, I, do I love her? Yeah, absolutely. Am I, you know, are we together? No. I, I mean, we're together in spirit. That's another strong sign of spirit. I think, I think we, need to, we need to dig deeper here. Like, how, what are your feelings towards Alisa? Um, I care about her a lot. You know, she's kind of like a, uh, you know, we're, we're family. You know, it's like I've been, you know. She's so if Elisa, if Elisa came to you and said that she wanted more than just being friends, what would you say? I would, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's a great question on the public, you know, platform. But, um, you know, I, I think anytime you get involved serious with someone, you have to really think about what you really want out of life. And where you see, I and where personally think I'm a better contender for Elisa. You're 18. Well, I don't know. You seem pretty wise for someone. You know, you know, but I don't really qualify any age because it's like, you know, you got LeBron James playing. You know, I met Kobe Bryant when he was a rookie. I mean, you know, I was painting Kobe when he passed away. I mean, almost... I, I'm willing to fight for Elisa. Yeah, what, what, what's, what, what are you talking like? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just I mean, trying to, this I, isn't, I, this isn't like, a dating look, excuse show. Excuse me. Excuse me. No one invited you to talk right now. I'm I'm in the spotlight. I okay. think that you're quickly. I think you're only here for Eliza. I don't think you want to help anyone. Oh, okay. You should Google me. <laughs> you're a painter, William. Quickly, Google it and see how much people I helped. My mother told me to think about myself William, a little bit. William, more. William, you were using your fame to try and get in the pants of younger, more beautiful people. Absolutely, I use my fame for everything. You know how hard. Why wouldn't to, you? You know how hard it is to become famous. <laughs> You know, yeah, and you don't even know Quigley, what Quigley, you are disgusting. Thank you me. know that. You should all know right, that. all right, all right. No, don't cut them off. Quigley. Keep them going. Quigley, you are disgusting. Let them go. Let them go. You made me feel sick. Thank you. You've got teeth like Stonehenge, and you don't deserve to be on this podcast. All podcast. right, all right. Everybody relax. This no, is it's fine. Show. It's Everybody absolutely... be nice. No, he's being mean to you. No, it's Darren. fine. At least it's Darren. fine. Darren. Hold on, Quig. Darren. Let's bring him back. Bring him no, back. Oh, I will. I will. Hold on. Darren, this guy Quig. What should I do here, Darren? Sure. Do you have any advice for me? I'm bipolar too. Don't forget. Yeah. So, Elisa, in your defense, the the British guy, Mike, um, he Matt. said you were just a Matt, whatever his name is. He said you were just a pretty face, like you were superficial. I don't believe that to be the Not case. At all. Oh, thanks, you guys. You guys are so nice. Oh my gosh. At least I give but, Darren my number because I want to really help him. Okay. Hey, okay. At, Alan, yes, I would sir. like to I like to uh, just tell you I'm not just stuck on being bipolar. Yeah, or I can't get past that. Really okay. Ah, there he is. There, there's okay. some, there's, there's Thank you for allowing me to regain composure. Frenchie, too much feedback. Too much but, feedback. Put your headphones on. Oh my gosh, these people—they're not ready. Because, ahead, oh, okay. Eliza, I, I had I had two homes. I yeah. had two homes. I sold one of the homes. I tried to reinvent myself. Okay. So I, I created an animation series, went to France, tried to sell it. Uh, but I think right now I need to find investors for the things, the creative part of my life. Oh. That's so a very difficult that? thing to find. Investors, yeah. All right, let's ask Eric. He's an investor. Eric, do you want to invest in Darren's? Uh, what was it, Darren, that you need investments for? I created an animation series. An animation series? Huh. Yes. Yep. What's it and about? It's based, it's based on a drug addict that becomes an MMA champion. Wow. That sounds, that like sounds based experience. loosely off my life. Wow. So how far in development is this? Um, I have an illustrator doing the initial storyboards right now. Oh. I took it before some producers in France and Atlanta. Wow. That's fantastic. Have you ever done something like that before? No, but I decided to do it being a pharmacist and knowing a lot of people that have um, been in drug addiction. Oh. Is that because of the prescriptions? What's that? In Ohio, you got more opioids than you got people. Yeah. Because of people like you writing the prescriptions. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Eliza, Eliza, hear me out. Okay. 
This is my Sunday sermon. Yeah, yeah. I don't like I'm, the way you're acting right now. I'm uh, speaking Frenchie. truth. First of all, I want to hear you in your real voice. I want to hear the real Frenchie, that you're not being authentic right now. And I really don't appreciate that because everybody else here is. Everyone here is at a Sunday service I'm where they're not, trying to be better I am people. the fighting preacher. No. I want to get to know the real Frenchie. I don't want any imposters. When I seen my own son's blood being collected in... <laughs> <laughs> in, in, um, in a container. I don't, I don't think I love this guy. I, you know, it's weird. I usually like trolls, but this troll I don't like. I don't know why. I think it's because maybe I have matured. Mm. Is, is that possible? Oh, absolutely. That guy has a fake voice. He's not being authentic. I would like to be nice to him. I'd like for him to be part of Kerman and Friends, but he's just like, I don't know, something it must off be hard to be the moderator. It is. Because it is my, my own off. sister. You don't know when to cut people off. You got no, people. I mean, that's I, right. I was literally trying to call in your show for about an hour. I'm really sorry about that. You know, no, it's fine. It, it, least, yeah. I think it's great. I mean, the good thing is you have all these people coming in. That's great. yeah. No, I know. I love it. Trust me. In fact, last week I was telling people I prayed because I didn't have any guests. And I prayed you know, for guests. And now I have more guests than I can handle. My own I sister think, can't I think, get it. I don't know if all your listeners know, but you, you probably work harder than almost anybody I know in any field. Aww. And I have a brain surgeon brother-in-law. Right. Can I, I request to be on at the but, same you know, time as his, Matthew? His reward's a little different. But, you know, for someone that you know, creates their own destiny, you're unbelievable at it. Okay. Now, just a minute. Kid, where are you, yes. first, where are you from and what are you on? Not you, Kid. I am on line, yeah? I want to speak to this Matty at the same time. But no, now, no, the question, I think no, you're missing the point. I think you're missing that's, the that's point. Given. Son. I son, think that you think I am wrong. susceptible are to malfeasance. On? Okay, yeah. Mr. Corey Feldman wannabe, what are you on? Listen to this punk, right? You're talking some, you're really talking oh, about the trousers now, yeah? I'm yeah. talking about some shit, bro. He just said, I might. What are you on? You, you're calling me out from across the seas, yeah? Right? I guarantee you, you would not want to be on the wrong side of the devil face to face, yeah? I'm on the right side of yeah, the devil. Yeah, 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 right. You, you're talking. You're talking. Talk, listen to bad. this punk, yeah? You're talking from across the Atlantic Ocean. You, yeah, yeah, then you're, you're talking across the from the Atlantic coming. Ocean. I seen you in to say, bro? prison. Oh no, sorry, Preston Prison. I seen you okay. trying to lift. Bet his feet. eyes are so yeah, dilated right it, now. Yeah, yeah. That's why you're he has the some guy who used to go in the showers with your shorts on. We used to call you Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, yeah. Pee Wee Herman. Your bird came zooming that photograph over at me to see what a real man looks like, sweetheart. I'm celibate. If I wasn't celibate, I'd Dude, show you our real man. I'm old enough man. to be your father. Oh, yeah, please, yeah, please. You're with a you, punk of a man. You're with a punk of a man. Take the sunglasses off. We we'll see the eyes dilated. Eyes dilated. Yes. You are awesome, fucking right? garbage. I don't know. You're the one who's speaking garbage. Well, I'm just standing up to the garbage and taking it out. If I take off my glasses, yeah? Yeah. Yes. You promise yes. to meet them in a neutral setting. Okay. Wrexham, the 7th of October, the birthday bash. Yeah. What is that supposed to mean? What is that? It means me and you step up to the plate. Yeah. Yeah. In a neutral setting. Wrexham. You know, there's some despicable people online. Joe Tranter. Joe Tranter. You're the one that's calling her. It's it's a Lisa, it's not a Eliza, for one thing. Oh, well, how am I meant to know? So that? have to have respect for that. that. It's talking? a Lisa, Whoa, not a Eliza. You're talking in Americanisms, yeah? Yeah? You wouldn't be able to understand me. I don't want to understand you. You think you think I just I want to know what you're your on. Kind before. You think I haven't dealt with your kind before. Listen, I had Sam Walker on the phone. Listen to this bitch. And <laughs> what hey, is Oh my god, he's Sam Walker. Hey ladies and gentlemen, he's Sam Walker on the phone. I really like you. I talk me and you. Don't know who freaking Sam Walker is. And this I'm kid speaking the truth. This kid yeah. with the headphones. So he has to have I his liquid courage. I know how to deal with a punk. Yeah. 
I want to. I want to Lisa. Okay, shut now, up, Aldi. Shut up, you know, Aldi. I want to talk. You, you tell them how to do it. Okay? Every ounce of my fiber. fiber. Every ounce of my warrior. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Calls out to attack and wreak havoc. Really? Lisa, can you get rid of this idiot, please? You guys are liberal. Idiot, not this punk. This yeah, punk. Obvious, okay. You know why you know how to deal with punks, son? You address because you, you deal with a punk every time you look in the me. mirror. You've been against me since the second I come on, cause you feel threatened. Cause you feel why do I feel, where where do I where am I feeling threatened? Where am I threatened? Okay, because I'm here to liberate you. Okay, liberate me. Oh, now he goes silent. No, okay. no, 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 he's, he's honestly. Old me, old man, old man. I'm on your side. This man is a fraud. This man is a fraud. He's wearing glasses and he's a fraud. Drink a cup of petrol, yeah. Dude, let me guess. You guys are liberals, right? I have nothing to do with this man. I have nothing to do with this man. He's a different man. He's changed. He's a different man in my heart. He's a different man in my mind. He's a worse human. The way he talks to you, the way he talks to you, is disgusting. This man right here above me. Gone out of the okay. stream. Okay. Alisa, okay. Okay. Let me ask you. Let me ask you two questions. Are you guys part of Black Lives Matter? Which uh, it sounds like a bowel movement. To be honest, I am six foot but three, it... two hundred and thirty-five pounds of prime male. Hello, Lisa. I'd like you to hear what uh, guy would... this man right here has a lot to say. No, he really doesn't, Matt. You he, seem he like doesn't. a nice guy. You seem like a very nice guy. I don't know what's going on with you. Lisa, I would prefer if you didn't like compliment me because like I really don't see you in that way. I'd prefer it to keep it biblical. Carry on. Well, speaking of biblical, I'd like to read this scripture. Okay. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Okay. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Okay, just keep that in mind, you guys, really. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. I wonder if Frenchie or Matt can do that. What do you think, Darren? Do you think that these guys can follow these scriptures? And if they did follow the scriptures, because the acts of the flesh are obvious, what these guys are doing right now, immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred. That's what we're seeing here, right? A bunch of sin, Darren. Right. I haven't heard Frenchie express his uh, religious beliefs. and He doesn't seem very religious. And is it Matt? The other guy? Yeah, Matt's the other guy. Well, he says he believes in God, but how could he down a woman like you if he really believes in God, you know? Exactly. Exactly. That's how I, I feel. I've been a Christian since I was six years old. Really? Okay? And oh. I don't I don't down other people if they're Hindu or whatever. Yeah, me neither. They, they don't believe the same way I do. I do tell them the option of what I believe and they make the choice whether they want to believe it or not. So I still think that we should help these guys, even though they don't seem to be that good of guys. Cause I've met a lot of people in my life, Alan, that I don't think are that nice. Right. So this has been in my life a lot where I meet somebody and I'm like, wow, this person's so dark. Why are they so dark? They're they're dark. They do dark things. They say dark things. They're mean. And those people, what are we supposed to do with those people? What do you think, yeah. Alan? You know what? I've been listening to him. I, I he was coming on me. He was coming on Corey. He was coming on everybody. And, and it's because this kid's eighteen years old. Right. And he doesn't understand. That's his problem. He don't understand. And the other exactly. guy, the one, the one that's in the glasses at first hut. I mean, look, like I was trying to tell you, the devil comes in and tries to interrupt something that you're producing, that you're doing. 
you prayed, you asked for a bunch of people to come in and your prayers were answered. And now you have the devil coming in trying to interrupt your show and he didn't do it. He got, he can get kicked off. And when we started asking them questions, that's when they rebelled and that's when they became defensive. And that's when they started coming after you even. I was waiting for that to happen. Oh yeah, so, that train's you know, never late. <laughs> One 18 year old kid, that kid needs help. Yeah, he does. But we're the people that help him. That I truly believe that. I believe I was inspired to do this. I don't even know why, right? But there's like no real reason why I was inspired to do this. You're, in, you're inspired to do this because you're phenomenal. That's why. Thank you, Mr. Octopus. How are you today? Well, I'm a, a, a well known internet uh, battle of trolls. I go after them and make them cry online. And I just like to point out that this Corey guy and this other guy, the Frenchy guy, they're yeah. obviously in some kind of dom and sub uh, troll relationship. It's some kind of psychosexual relationship. And look at me. I'm on the line all the time. I got multiple devices. I'm in 30 chats at the same time right now. I believe in you. You're going to make this comeback. You're, you're, look, these, these young guys, they look at you and they can't, even though they're in a psychosexual, closeted relationship they get turned on by eliza jordan like any other grown-up man i have one question though sure anything about the guy, you. yeah about the guy you know you slept with are you a heavy sleeper am i a heavy sleeper yeah are you a heavy sleeper yeah i mean i sleep well why do you ask you sleep like a log you know like you're dead to the world i mean I'm i was a, huh i used to have a girlfriend way back in the day she slept like a log you know even though I'm changed my preferences, yeah. I could grab and grope her all night long. Are you sure your friend didn't cop deals when you were asleep? Oh, you mean my friend William Quigley? No, actually, yeah, that no, we, guy. no, no, we were just friends for, uh, I mean, we've been friends for like 20 years. And he's like sleeping with you. There's mice in the freaking apartment. Yeah. You're in New York City. It's cold. You know, yeah. when th you know what happens? You get the little uh, turkey, turkey testers, you know, when it gets cold. Yeah, and no, can't no, just he, resist. He uh, can't you resist like touching you. No, no, he's he was really uh, respectful. Uh, let me just go to my what? sister uh, Allison. Um, me. When yeah. I started like, knowing that, I I realized that I had to switch teams. So uh, again, I'm here to fight the online trolls with my superior wit, and I'm online all the time. Oh. Ask for me, Alexander Octopus Cortez. Everybody knows me, and you uh, have a great day, Lisa. Wow, what a great guy. I mean, he mispronounced my name, but that's okay. I like that octopus. Okay, Allison, you know, usually this is an hour show, but it's like almost a two hour show now because uh, everybody was so excited about Alan today. And I would like for you to do a commercial break and then we're gonna end. Uh, so go ahead, why don't you tell us more about Arbon? Okay, so I am so excited to be back with you guys and share with you a morning and nighttime ritual that I do for my skin. Um, previously, I used to do Botox and all types of things to make my lines more smooth and my skin tone even. Since I switched to Arbonne, now I don't need any of those things. So these products last me about six months. They are not a big investment uh, up front, but let me show, share with you what I do in the morning. So first we start with our, our Arbonne Super Calm Cleansing Milk. This is a vegan product, not tested on animals, very sensitive on your skin. So I'm going to start with that first. So I just put about four pumps on my hand, small amount, and it goes on like silk. After that, I use my Arbon RE9 Advanced. You guys, this is the new skincare of our of our lifetime. I've used Lancome. I've used all the high end brands. They're sitting in my drawer now because I don't use them anymore. This stuff is amazing. I've had this for probably seven months now, actually. 
and look at how much I have left. So smooth. I don't need anything else. I don't need concealer after this. I don't need any makeup because it's smoothed out my tone so much. But now I don't have acne breakouts. I don't have fine lines. And look. And then I do sometimes, because I have a baby and I'm up all night long, if I do have any puffiness or I look tired, I'll use this prep work with a little bit of blush. And it's also used as a concealer as well. If you're interested in finding out more about these products, you can contact Elisa directly and she can pair you with the best skincare for your type of skin. Thank you for watching. Yeah, just contact me unless your name is uh, DJ French or Matt. You can contact me if your Hello. names are not those names, right? Right, Matt and DJ French? Elisa, why would you say that? I've been here. I've been honest. I've been nice. No, you haven't. I've... You both Elisa. haven't. Elisa. Fair, the, men, Elisa. the men didn't take kindly to us. Elisa, I pointed out the fact that the Quincy guy or whatever his name is likes you. And it's the only reason that Quigley? he's on the stream. And, Quigley. And, and Quigley's that, here that for you. Therapist, that therapist, yeah. He's a hypnotherapist. Are you talking yeah. about Alan? He could put a glass eye to sleep. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can you kick this man at the top? This Frenchie, he, he means leave nothing to me anymore. Leave it out. Kick him. He, he, I would have told him like sense. I don't like Frenchie either. I don't nah, like him either. He's your I'm friend. Done. You but want I can't, him here. I can't. He's not my friend. I've just seen his videos. But listen, Eli Elisa, yes. you need to really see sense from me. I'm talking sense here. And you're outing me on your stream saying you won't even help me if I need it. I'll help you. What do you need help with? No. Well, in my time of need, I might contact you, Elisa. But the fact that you've just told me that Frenchie and me are barred from messaging you is ridiculous. And you brought back in the hypnotist. I don't know what he's going to do. If he wants to hypnotize me in front of 50 people. Okay, right everybody here. relax. I'm getting a phone call. Kermit and friends. Hey, Elisa, it's Chad. Chad, thank oh, God. Chad. Thank God it's Chad. Chad. Oh, my gosh. Thank God you called. Oh, my gosh. Oh, how are you? I'm doing great. I just want to, I don't really have a lot to add right now. But I do just want to say that your show is amazing. It's incredible to see you bring them. I don't even know where, how, where do you find all these people, Lisa? You just have like a talent for finding like the most interesting and crazy uh, people and bring them all together. Well done, I have to say. Well done. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. I really appreciate you calling. And, uh, you know, do you have any thoughts on our guest today, Alan? Um, I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna hold off on saying anything. I, I, I haven't made up my mind on Alan yet. You haven't made up your mind on Alan yet? Wow. I have not. I do. I do want to say I like Frenchie. Frenchie. Frenchie was making. How is that possible? Frenchie, there's somebody on earth that likes you. Someone speaking sense. I've not you been know, given you know, a fair Frenchie. chance Frenchie. over the water. But anyway, Lisa, I just wanted to say you're doing great. I'd like to speak so with this hypnotherapist. Look at chat. You'll see like all the names. Are all of your old fans and viewers from the original iteration of Kermit and Friends. And so uh, everyone's having a great time. Keep it up, Elisa. We love you. Love you too, Chad. And I love everybody watching and everybody that appeared today. Thank you I'd so much. I'd like to speak much. to this hypnotherapist. You want to speak to Alan? I really don't want Alan to speak to you. How's that? I feel like I need to protect Alan from you because you are mean and you are not nice and you are not holy. I'd like and to come. I'd like Alan. to come. I, I put my hands up. I put my hands up. Okay. I'd like to come. Okay. No, what are you going to gonna say to Alan? No, on. no, no, no. You're not allowed to speak to Alan because I feel like you need to repent for your sins that you did today. You need to repent. You've been hard. I, I had an outburst. No, yeah, no, no. yeah, I had an outburst, all right? No, yeah. no, 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 no. You've been mean to me. You've been but it's mean like, to Alan. You've it's been like mean to Jack, Brandon. It's like Jack Russell's, yeah? Snapping at the heels of a rough wheeler. No, 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 no. You're not allowed to speak to anybody anymore. I'm done with you. You need to repent. I don't like the way you were today. You showed the show no respect at all, but I'm going to welcome you back. Compaction shotguns is what's going to be the recipe for me. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. You cannot 
respect Kerman and friends. You can. All right, fine. Alan's willing to speak with you. I do not know why. I'm going to put my laptop on charge. Wait there. Wait there. I'm not losing you. Alan, why on God's Alan, green earth would let's you Let's have it one on God? one. You don't believe in me. I never said that. You did. You, you said as so soon as I came on the air. Yeah, we're one to one. I never said I didn't believe in you. Every ounce of my fiber, every ounce of my warrior being, yeah, calls out. When you strike me down. Is look at the behavior. Look at the behavior of your other guests. Why did you bring all the heat on to me? Why is it all down to, to Frenchy? Well, first of all, Frenchie, I, I'm not the one that brought the heat on you. You came on the show. I came and... on. And within five seconds, yeah, you were going off. Ow. I've just hit no. me head. See, well, look. Do I'm you remember what you were doing? Do you want to? You want me to play back what you were doing? They call me the devil because I was a devil, yeah? But now I am the fighting preacher, yeah? That's great. That's yeah, yeah, great. yeah, right. That's great. But you want me to play back what you were doing in the beginning? Look, you were laughing and not, it we wasn't it didn't looking, look like a, looking like a something very rude in between st sitting there sticking it up like this, yeah. And you sat there. I really with your hate level. this guy, Alan. I hate this no, guy. I, you know I, what? He, he. I don't he, like. You him. know what? First of all, Lisa, if what? I was rude to him, I apologize for being rude. But I don't believe I was. No, Look, you I are. saw a guy that came on and was showing nothing but disrespect. Absolutely. And he calls himself the devil. Now he calls himself the preacher. Yeah. I mean, you go from devil to preacher. That's great. <laughs> That's great. But his actions, he doesn't act as a, uh, a Christian would. No, he doesn't. What should he do? How does he repent? When you've been that bad, when you've been that horrible to people. And you got to get down on your knees and you got to ask God for repentance and ask him to forgive you for your sins forgive him for his disrespect because if he doesn't he's just going to continue to keep on doing what he's doing and look matt the the 18 year old boy or child, a kid i totally respect him as well and he's not a bad person i can tell he's not a bad person but what he's doing i totally get it he feels that he's getting some kind of discernment from somewhere oh sorry I, I was just in prayer i was just in prayer my bad no, I watched you. I saw you. But he's getting some kind of discernment from somewhere, and he feels like people are trying to prey on you. But, Matt, just so you know, Elisa and I have known each other for quite a while, and mm -hmm. we've gotten to know each other not just this way. We got to know each other way before this way. So, look, Matt, you're 18 years old. You got a long way to go. I'm 60 years old. I've been where you're at. And you know what? I hope you can remember from this day forward, and this experience from this day forward, that if you are who you say you are, which I believe you are, you're going to go far, man. You're going to Alan, do I would really just well. like to know, I've, I've never, ever believed in hypnotism. I'd just like you to prove it. You can do that. And I would be happy to give you Alisa, my number. I don't Alisa, have a problem with that. I would prefer it. Alisa, Alisa, I'll tell you what, Matt. I'll can tell I just you ask one question? Matt, can I, I ask one question? I'll, I'll tell you, Matt. I'll tell you yeah, what okay. I'll do. I have a my own that you can go to. I will send the link to Alisa. She is, will then send the link to you, and I will do it with you. And then here's what we'll do: Is, is Alisa we'll okay with just on, leaving the will... call really quickly, so I can just talk one to one with Alan? Please, okay, is that okay, Lisa? Just hold on, Matt. Corey wanted to say something to Alan. What, okay, what Corey. Corey. Okay, Ellen, I agree I will, with I you. I welcome you with open arms, Corey. Okay, I agree with you on a lot of things. That's why I'm wearing a Mulan Labre shirt, which you don't know what Mulan It's not about what you wear. It's what you're inside. But, yes, I believe in freedom of arms. But I agree with Alan a lot of stuff. He's a cool guy. And this is why i asked you that you're a liberal right because you guys are easily triggered but <sighs> when you're with god yes we are vigilant but we know how to maintain ourselves hmm. but alan is a cool guy alan has a lot to say for himself 
for somebody who is practicing a disbelief. Okay, then, okay, kid, kid, what does he have to explain to himself about? He doesn't have to explain anything. I would like I you to, explain anything. to understand to that all I want is for in front of all the people on the stream without removing me, Eliza, without removing me. Eliza, yeah. I would just like to talk oh, to Alan one to one. All right, all right. Oh, this is so frustrating. Just be nice to him, uh, Matt. Make sure Eliza, nice. I've, I've done nothing but be nice. Right. Oh, whoops. <laughs> wrong, wrong one. <laughs> Eliza, that's really unprofessional, but sure. Okay, Alan, I would just like to ask. As an honest man, a man of God, do you honestly believe that you are a hypnotist? Yeah. I would, so, I, I what is I, what is I what learned. is the sh what is the shortest method of hypnotism you could use on me right now? One one that wouldn't put Eliza out of her. No, but you're not open to it, Matt. That's the thing. You're not open to it. And by the Eliza, way, if I'm not open to it, show. why am I asking hey, to be fucking hey, hypnotized? Hey, 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 this is my show. I'm muting you. Okay. So I don't care how long Alan's been a hypnotist or if he just wants to be a hypnotist or he, if he can hypnotize you or if he can not hypnotize you. I don't care because he could be whoever he wants to be. Okay. Just like you, Matt, you could be whoever you want to be. I could be whoever I want to be. You could have anything you want in this world, okay? You have to be a good person and you have to have faith and that's it. That's what it comes down to and that's what you're going to learn next week on Kermit and Friends. See you next week, Matt.